guys, it's Graham here. If you're from the northeast of England, you'll have heard of a phrase, uh, the Wilds of Money, and you'll have, you'll have used that phrase as well. And I was embarrassingly old when I realised the Wilds of Money is an actual real place. Uh, it's for the area from which the river once built arises, from the Fontburn and the Hartburn. And it means, you know, the middle of nowhere, godforsaken land, out of bounds for ordinary folk. And I guess during the 13th and the 16th centuries, when this was a land of border rivers, this land would have been outside the pale for ordinary folk. So we've come here to try and find a camping spot and just explore a little bit. Seems like a good place to camp. Crags are pretty impressive from the, the bottom. You can see why climbers want to come here. But we haven't found anywhere to camp really, and the ground's very boggy. So we're going to ascend them again and see if there's anywhere to camp on top. We've just ascended the crags by a really rough, steep, heathery bit. And I'm worried that at the top it's all going to be heathery the same and won't be a tent pitch. But we'll see, fingers crossed. And as you can see behind me, the weather's really moved in. I've got the hilly tonight, the Acto. I didn't bring a tarp because of the, the forecast high winds, so I'll be okay once I get to pitch. If I can find a pitch with this weather coming in, it feels like yeah, I am on the wilds of Warney now. Really old marker post. So far we've found some places you could reasonably bivvy at the top of the crags but nowhere to pitch a full tent. So we'll keep on exploring. We might end up going further back and pitching in the trees here. Can he drop down there? Just slipped. I've been really careful where I put my feet because I read in a book I've got on caves in Northumberland. There's a great cave rift at the top of Great Wani Crag called uh, Wani Baya and it's big enough to fall into and cut up with heather and like a loose cover of boulders and stuff so I don't want to fall into that. Found a really nice little enclosed area here, a little bit of shelter. So we've got the tents pitched now and we've left the tents behind up there and we've come searching for Great Wani Baya which is, uh, it's on the map and uh, it's a, just a great fissure in the rock and we found part of it but I'm not sure we can climb in down through here. Come and have a look at this, see what you can see. Oh, I don't want to fall in here. 
you could fall over over there couldn't you here oh that's really deep that is serious that is really really deep in there wow it looks about 10 inches 12 inches wide and a deep cleft going down and there's no handholds nothing you could, couldn't climb into there I couldn't anyway but wow you really worth to be careful walking up here Sean do you want to climb into it are you sure? Yeah. Oh. I mean, you could probably break your leg, couldn't you? Yeah. I think we'll leave the cave exploring for another day. Sure. What? <laughs> Again, have you just gone down? The lake went down there. And... Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's get out let's, of here. Uh, let's not. <laughs> Found a really good pitch for a tent here. Grass is nice and flat. It's right on the edge of the crag. There's a there's a good 50, 60 foot drop there. So the views are great, but it's not for sleepwalkers. And our tents are pitched now anyway, so we'll we'll leave them where they are. Hi guys, it's probably wild out there. Um, the rain's been lashing down and the tent's getting a fair bit of rattling, although it's calmed itself down a bit now. Um, I've just been in my sleeping bag trying to get myself a bit warmer. It's just freezing. I mean, I've uh, I've spent winter, a winter weekend in the Cairngorms and I've been up snowing in winter and stuff. And I've, I've never been as cold as I am now. I think it's just the dampness and the wind chill it really makes a difference. So I'm getting a bit warmer. And I'm going to get on with my bait and warm myself up. I've got uh, I've got bison burgers and uh, some homemade chutney in the bun, a stocky. Uh, my brother-in-law, my friend's the bison farmer, so he sent some bison burgers up for us, and I'm, I'm not going to complain about that. A little bit of oil in the pan. Oops. The wind just sent the tent so there and knocked me cans off. I'm going to have to be so careful cooking like this. Oh. In the meantime, I'm going to have a griller, 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 griller. Five percent. The sweetness of elderflower make it the perfect beer with enjoy with fire cooked food. There we go. Cheers, everyone. That's my burgers done. Just gotta cut my stocky. Grass in my mouth. Just gonna put a little blue cheese in between my burgers. And then I've got some homemade chutney. This was made with courgette, apple, tomato, and a lot of jalapeno. I take my chutney very seriously. So here is my bison burger with homemade chutney and dodged like the blue cheese. Doesn't look too bad. I 
wow that is amazing and the taste reminds me of what I said to my son this morning before he left for work I said bye son I can't help myself anyway if I pudding it's sticky toffee pudding with this rather beautiful spoon my wife got me for Christmas I think she got it from Etsy it's nice isn't it night it, uh, I didn't get much sleep uh, it was just so windy it was a constant 20 odd miles an hour wind and then occasional 40 mile an hour gusts and that uh, that tent was solid and I was dry but it just it, it flapped like a, a pigeon in a wheelie bin it was just all, all night and the fabric coming down to touch my face so I didn't I didn't sleep well and you see these guys on YouTube and they're using like single hoop tents that design in like 80 mile an hour winds and I just don't know how they get any sleep at all or, or even why they'd want to do it. Absolutely bonkers. But really pleased I was out last night and uh, really pleased you came along for the, the journey. So thanks and I'll, I'll see you next time. <laughs>